Hi, this is about tadpoles um, and their diets. Uh, this is my experiment for the final lab project. So, um, a little introduction about African dwarf frogs. They're from Equatorial Africa, which is a small part of Western Africa, um, on the west coast by Equatorial Guinea um, and uh, Gabon. Um, and they stretch out uh, to uh, parts of the uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Nigeria. Um, in America, though, they're very popular pets because they're very low maintenance and they're freshwater um, and they make good pets in tanks with other fish. Um, unlike uh, most frogs, they are carnivorous um, and uh, the adult uh, African dwarf frogs usually like to feed on shrimp um, and it only takes nine weeks for uh, tap holes to grow. Unlike, um, the, unlike other frogs, which usually take from 12 to 16 weeks for their tap holes to grow. Tap holes diets. So, um, for the first week of their lifetime, uh, tap holes only eat the mermaid plant, um, but, um, then after that, uh, their diet um, also consists of mosquito larvae, uh, seagrass, water strayer, cyclops, and algae. So, the question um, is, that I want to answer was which food was the most beneficial to the tadpoles' development, and the hypothesis was if the tadpoles will eat uh, the mosquito larvae, then they will grow the quickest because of the protein and nutrients in the larvae. So, uh, the experiment was uh, five tadpoles and six bowls. Um, each bowl gets fed a different food, um, and uh, I would observe the behavior and development of the tadpoles every week. So, uh, some data. The mosquito larvae was the most effective slash beneficial. Um, every tadpole reached adulthood by the end of nine weeks, and the wire strayers and cyclops were also very effective. Um, only one or two of uh, their tadpoles didn't reach um, adulthood by the end of nine weeks. Um, algae was kind of effective, but not really. Um, but, uh, the seagrass and mermaid plant were not effective at all. Um, and none of their, the tadpoles in those tanks made it to adulthood by nine weeks. And some of them even died. So, um, analysis or conclusion. The mosquito larvae was the most effective probably because of the proteins in them. Um, well, mosquito larvae, uh, usually eats um, a lot of um, nutrient-rich um, food when they're young because, um, well, uh, they really have to uh, to survive to adulthood um, and to dominate in adulthood. Um, and um, so um, all of that nutrient-rich food is being passed down to the tadpoles that are eating the larvae. Um, water strayers are also similar, uh, they have a lot of bugs on the surface of, uh, the water. Um, they also, um, have a lot of lipids, uh, because the lipids are hydrophobic, and that's what, um, enables them to walk on water, so to speak. Um, this is unlike plants, uh, which have very little protein. They have, um, quite a few vitamins that are beneficial to the tadpoles, but, um, they don't have a lot of protein or anything really to, um, give the tadpoles energy and to really help them grow as, definitely not as much as the mosquito larvae or the water strayers or the cyclops even, even. And, um, if you don't know what cyclops are, uh, they're tiny crustaceans, um, they're almost microscopic, but they're not, um, yeah, and they feed on plankton, um, yeah, thank you for listening.